All right, would everyone please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia? Here. Councilwoman Nicholson? Here. Councilwoman Marcotte? Here. Supervisor Calavita? Here. And I'll have the record reflect that Councilman Dooley is absent. All right. So let's roll right to the appointment. We have a senior programs bus driver appointment, and Dawn Donovan is requesting the probationary appointment of Charles John of Bronxville, New York, to the full-time position of bus driver, grade C, step two, at the annual salary of $53,999, effective on July 23rd, 2021. If approved, he will be required to serve a probationary period, which will run not less than 12 weeks and not more than 52 weeks. The appointment is contingent upon the successful completion of the background investigation, and funds have been provided for in the 2021 budget. And uh, Charlie's done an excellent job uh, driving, especially our seniors love him, they're crazy about him, and he's been very, very helpful, and uh, he's a very kind man. We're delighted to have him. So I'd make the motion and ask for a second, please. Second. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next, we have the probationary appointment of Suzanne Rade of Tuckahoe, New York, to the full-time position of Recreation Assistant, Grade 3, Step 5, at the annual salary of $46,534, effective July 23rd, 2021. If approved, she will be required to serve a probationary period, which will run not less than 12 weeks and not more than 52 weeks. The appointment is contingent on the successful completion of the background investigation, and funds have also been provided for in a 2021 budget. And Suzanne has worked uh, for the town of East Jets for quite some time now in a part-time capacity and she comes extremely uh, highly recommended by Sally Veltiti and the crew in the recreation slash senior slash parks and buildings uh, department. Um, she's done an excellent job for us and we're very lucky to have her. So I would make the motion ask for a second please. So moved. All right please call the roll. Councilman Mark Aye. Councilman Marcochi excuse me. Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson. Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte. Aye. Supervisor Calavita. Aye. Next, we have an appointment to the Police Advisory Board. I'm hereby recommending the appointment of John Rowland of 20 Dorchester Road, East Chester, New York, to the position of Police Advisory Board member, effective July 14th, 2021, through December 31st, 2021. And uh, John was the chair of our Police Reimagination Reinvention Committee. He's a former police chief with decades of law enforcement experience. Uh, he's a very knowledgeable person, I think very able. Uh, very uh, forthright and thoughtful. He'll do a great job. I also uh, want to thank uh, Tom Andrus, who had served faithfully on the Police Advisory Board. You know, Tom was uh, a voice of reason always, uh, very conservative, uh, but always thought everything through. He was a great asset to the board. He's been a great asset to the community in his involvement with the Green Olds Greenville Civic Association and all of his other volunteerism that would be too numerous to mention here. But he has always been a fixture at our meetings, and we want to thank him for his service. He did an excellent job. So with that being said, would someone care to make a motion on Mr. Rowland? So moved. Second. All right, please call the roll on John. Councilman Marcoccio? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next, we have the approval of the minutes of the June 1st, 2021 Town Board meeting. Any modifications or amends? amendments? No. no, there being none, I'll make a motion to approve same as submitted. Ask for a second. All right, please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next, we have reports of departments, boards, and commissions. We have the police department report. We can receive and file our parking summons and VNT violation report together with the statement of accounts. Chief Bonsi? Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, the um, conversion to our new police radio system is moving along. We're closer to going uh, full time on that. That is the, um, the piggybacking on the, the MTA radio system, which will result in a much, we've discussed it a couple of times at meetings. It'll be a very uh, uh, you know, improvement on our coverage. Um, the village of Bronxville and Tuckahoe are both gonna also piggyback on that with us. I think Bronxville may have converted already. So, uh, so it's definitely gonna be an improvement because as you know, over the years, we've, we've tried to remedy the, the, 
the uh, radio problems after that narrow banding that the FCC I know. did. So, I know. You, know, you know, but this is definitely a... Uh, so there'll be, be no more drops, so to speak. No more drops, So if you're yeah. on Garth Road or out in Chester Heights, you won't have any issues, which is important. I, I mean, literally, you can use a portable from Dutchess County, and it will get our radio system clear as could be. So it's, it's really going to be an improvement. It's good. <laughs> um, also, our body camera program is near an implementation. Um, the equipment is ordered and should be in soon. Hopefully, we'll have that in place by September. Um, almost all of our members have completed their annual firearms qualification and will be attending the second and third day of the Westchester County Police Academy in-service um, program. Um, a reminder again to all residents to be diligent about locking the cars. Uh, removing the keys and fobs and valuables from the cars. In the northern part of the county earlier this month, there was um, a rash of those break-ins, and um, I think they found that some of those cars following days were used in Connecticut in some violent you know, crimes and stuff. So it's not just um, like kids that are fooling around. They are like uh, hardened criminals. They get arrested, they get let out, they're back doing it again. So it's uh, just for people to be aware of that. And, um, you know, if we lessen the opportunity, hopefully we'll have less, uh, less crime. Um, as you mentioned, the, the summons totals, they're up from last year, but last year's numbers still ref reflect the end of the pandemic when we were starting to, uh, to get more activity, um, you know, generated. So, um, that's why those numbers are a little different still. Um, two, two people um, retired from the department or left the department. Our police aide and um, parking enforcement officer, Betsy Vuxenaj, she was, worked for us for about three years. She was an auxiliary, she was a police aide, and then she did the PEO, as I said. And um, she was hired by White Plains Police as a police officer. So I wanna wish her the best. Like, um, we've had a lot of success with that police aide program. They really do get kind of uh, a little, you know, um, indoctrination into what it's like, and, and a lot of them do move on to, uh, to be successful police officers. So it's nice to see her, we wish her the best. Also, um, our administrative assistant, Doris Ferrioli, at the end of June, she um, retired. So she had been with us for 15 and a half years, almost my whole tenure as police chief. She was very dedicated to the department, to the town, you know, um, great worker. And, um, you know, we're definitely gonna miss her, but, um, you know, we wish her and her family the best. And um, that's all I have. Anything for the chief? All right, thank you very much, Chief. Okay, thank you. Okay, that brings us to the Law Department report. <clears throat> yes, good evening. First, I have a resolution authorizing a settlement of a claim by Louis Corridio against the town of East Chester in the amount of $848.14 for damages uh, sustained to Mr. Corridio's vehicle on May 26, 2021. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccio. Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Okay, next, a resolution authorizing a supervisor to execute and deliver a lease agreement made between the Town of East Chester and the East Chester Fire Department for the use of the Marble Schoolhouse from July 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. Yeah, the lease agreement was attached uh, to our documentation. Uh, it's a very simple draft. We're basically uh, enabling the fire department to keep a presence, uh, not just manpower, but apparatus in the Chester Heights section of town. Um, you know, they could of course rely upon Pelham Fire Department or other firehouses, but we felt very strongly, as did the fire board, that it was important to keep them localized. And it seemed like the most logical thing to do would be to take advantage of the parking lot at the Historical Society and also the, the buildings that are there, rather than uh, uh, acquire tents and, and temporary shelter and housing or trailers and whatnot. It seemed like it would be a better idea to take advantage of what we had right there. And it's literally, literally a stone's throw from the old uh, from the house that's being renovated presently. So uh, we want to certainly thank the Historical Society. I know Sheila might have a comment or two on this. Uh, they've stepped up to help out. And I think that the entire area of town, uh, you know, is certainly well served by having the fire department in close proximity to the station. 
Right. Um, any further comments? No, I, I would. Um, I'll I'll move it. And I would just say that the uh, the board, of course, is delighted to be able to assist the fire department. The community is delighted, and I think, <clears throat> as the supervisor stated, it is the most logical and, and common sense solution to have them right there. So we're happy to help. So we, I offer that as a motion. And we gave it to them for free. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they're going to be paying some of the uh, utility bills utilities. and whatnot there. So we'd appreciate that. And doing a little bit of improvement there to make it habitable for the guys that are staying there. Anyway, so that being said, we have a, we have a motion. Uh, we have a second. Second. All right. Thank you, Luigi. So would you please call the roll? Councilman Marcoccia? Aye. Councilman, Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Okay. Next, our resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute and deliver a contract <coughs> made between the Town of East Chester and Absolute Auctions and Realty, Inc. for the sale of government assets by online auction. Sure. Just so you know about this, we have extra stuff laying around piece of apparatus, chainsaws, you know, uh, broken down uh, truck or whatever, uh, we put it online and auction it to get some salvage value to it. It does not cost us anything. Uh, the person that buys it pays a fee to the auction company. So if we can capture some revenue on some stuff that's completely unusable, and there's always stuff that's unusable, uh, we're certainly going to take advantage of that. So I make a motion to ask for a second, please. Second. Thank you. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. <clears throat> okay, next I have an introduction of a local law providing for the amendment of certain sections of local law number 2-2018, the telecommunications franchising and licensing law, including sections 2-E and 10-A1 regarding the term of a franchise or revocable license within the town and also to set a date for a public hearing, which will be, I guess, the August 10th meeting of 2021. Right, August 10th at 8 o'clock in this room. And again, this would be for the purpose of extending the term on an anticipated franchise agreement with our franchise cable uh, providers. Uh, and this was, of course, um, you know, we, we're going to be doing that as, as time moves forward. I know the committee is gathering and convening again to, uh, to handle that. Any further comment? Okay, that being said, I make the motion set a public hearing on August 10th, the tw uh, 2021, here at 8 o'clock. Someone care to make a second? Second. Okay. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Okay, next, I have a resolution authorizing a settlement of a certiorari proceeding instituted by Valenti Nourishell Corp, affecting the premises known as Section 65.G, Block 2, Lot 18. 478 White Plains Road. The assessment years in this property are from 2015 through 2020 and the tax years 2016 through 2021. Total town tax refund on this property is $3,611.93. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Okay, and last, I have a resolution authorizing a settlement of a certiorari proceeding instituted by Valenti Isis de Corp, affecting the premises known as Section 65.G, Block 2, Lot 23, 470 White Plains Road. The assessment years in this property, 2015 through 2020, tax years from 2016 through 2021, and the total town tax refund is $9,299.19. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next, we have the receiver of taxes report for June. We can receive and file same together with the uh, May monthly report from the clerk's office. Anything further? No. All right. That moves us over to correspondence. We have a memorandum from the controller on some budget transfers and revisions. Uh, pretty much uh, we're going uh, in police department, uh, some golf maintenance work and pool supplies and some maintenance and repairs and uh, also our uh, uh, outside service fee for the police department. I'll move same and ask for a second, please. Thank you. Thank you. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next, we have a memo for the control on part-time and seasonal employees uh, for camp and for Lake Isle. Got a couple more fill-ins. Uh, make a motion to approve same and ask for a second. Second. All right, please call the roll. 
Councilman Marcoccio? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next, I have a memo from the Superintendent of Parks and Recreations regarding the approval of a grant for a uh, from the Community Fund for Senior Programs and Services. And the Community Fund has been nice enough to give us $44,500. And this will be used for uh, uh, food shopping and errands transportation and light housekeeping for our seniors. Uh, in years past, we've done the shopping, the errands, the housekeeping, um, but also programs at Lake Isle and Garth Road and 46 Jackson. But presently, you know, for the last year, so we haven't done it for obvious reasons. So uh, this will be kind of rekindling that. So we're very delighted that the uh, 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 community fund would provide us with the funding. And you know, a lot of times you'll see their logo on our literature, and we do that because we want to do that. We want to support the community fund because they're raising funds to give back to East Chester, Tuckahoe, and Bronxville. They do an excellent job with that, and we're certainly appreciative of their contributions. So I would make the motion uh, to sign the agreement between, for me to, to have the authority to sign the agreement between the community fund and the town for our East Chester senior programs and services. Someone care to make a second? Second. Thank you. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccio? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. And speaking of kicking things back up again, we have the teen scene will be starting again. And uh, we want to thank the community fund for an additional $10,000. This will be for transportation for trips, also uh, holiday trips and events, DJs for the pool parties. There are two pool parties coming up uh, at Lake Isle for the kids. And of course, game nights for the Southeast Consortium. Uh, and uh, we're hoping to reopen the teen scene in the fall of 2021 once school starts up again because it was dormant for the last you know 18 years I'm mean, 18 months unfortunately so uh, we're delighted to get this moving again and um, I'll make the motion to authorize uh, myself to execute the agreement with the community fund for the teen scene someone care to second, second thank you please call the roll councilman Marcoccio aye councilwoman Nicholson aye councilwoman Marcotte aye supervisor Calavita aye Next, we have uh, another memorandum from the Superintendent of Parks and Recreations regarding the approval of a grant from the Westchester County Youth Bureau for Youth Employment. And we are uh, the largest employer of youth in the town. We have presently about 75 summer camp staff alone. Uh, we also have Lake Isle employees and lifeguards and whatnot. Uh, and this is a, uh, uh, an amount of $8,250 from the Westchester County Youth Bureau for recreation program staffing. So uh, in this particular case, uh, we'd be gladly accept that to offset our expenses as well. So, so we need a motion to authorize the acceptance of the grant from the County uh, Youth Bureau for the Youth Employment Program that will end at the end of this year. Um, second. Thank you. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccio. Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next is a memo from the Superintendent of Parks and Recreations regarding the approval of the agreement of an agreement between the Town of East Chester and Westchester County Department of Senior Programs and Services for case management services for the period of April 1st, 2021 through March 31st, 2022. Um, as you can imagine, uh, there is a significant load on our caseworker upstairs uh, for our senior services. Uh, this is uh, an amount of $29,860, which we will match in the amount of $12,797 to continue their services. Uh, you know, I think at some point we really need to consider the addition of a part-time person, perhaps another full-time person, to assist in our case management. Uh, you'd be amazed at how many uh, seniors and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, young people that are there for their parents call the office asking for assistance and management and help with a, a, a tremendous range of issues. So the more resources we can get them, the better uh, they will be and the better served our seniors will be. So uh, I would make a motion to authorize the execution of this agreement with the county uh, for CSC case management. Um, and of course, uh, our uh, matching grant has been put into our budget. So we've, we've supplied that amount already. Someone care to make a motion? I'm sorry, make a second. Second. Thank you. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccio? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Rolling right along here. Another memorandum from the Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. 
regarding the approval of a contract between the town and the county department of senior programs for uh, uh, for uh, excuse me for uh, uh, NSIP meaning nutritional service programs for uh, uh, the year 2021 and on this particular case this is for um, our CSE program there's eighteen thousand two hundred eighty four dollars from the county we're matching seven thousand eight hundred and thirty six dollars and this is for transportation for residents I'm sorry I read the wrong introduction this is for the uh, transportation services contract and this is for uh, basically getting seniors from their homes to Lake Isle and from their homes to medical appointments and uh, we're going to uh, uh, have a total here of about $25,000 after the county's funds. But this is a very important service because it gets seniors to the nutrition center, gets them to programs that they enjoy, and it gets them to their doctors. Um, it's just one of many, many programs that we have for our seniors, including you know, light housekeeping and all the nutritional stuff and the social stuff that we do. So this is important. So uh, I would uh, make the motion, ask for a second, please, to approve the agreement with the county uh, and the town for transportation services. I'll second. Thank you. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccio? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcott? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next is the Nutrition Services Incentive Program uh, for the program year 2021. And this is for home delivered meals, Lake Al Senior Center meals, and Garth Road Center meals. Uh, and uh, we're going to hopefully reopen in August, as we've been talking about. And this is in the amount of $91,994. And the town of East Chester uh, is our, you know, we're the contractor, so we're matching $24,906 for these uh, Roman numeral 3C programs. And again, as we're getting back up again, we're going to start feeding everybody, get the nutrition center open. So it's nice to be back in business uh, for our seniors. So someone care to make a motion to approve this? I'll move it. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marcoccio, for the second. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccio? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next, I have a memorandum from the police chief regarding the approval of prisoner transportation between the town of East Chester and the Westchester County Jail. And this will be for a higher rate of reimbursement. And it also addresses reimbursement for extended delays, as well as the need for the matron when there are female, female prisoners involved. This will go to the end of next year. And uh, it's good for us because it's increasing the reimbursement rate and, and whatnot that we have to go through. Uh, and we're in uh, you know, a, a quadrant of the county, and it's all based upon mileage and all, but they're upping the rates, which is delightful for us. So anyway, uh, I would make the motion on this and ask for a second, please. Second. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccio? Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. Next is a memo from the Lake Isle General Manager regarding the approval of the addendum to the uh, existing license agreement between the town of East Chester and Brightview Golf. Uh, maintenance. Uh, Brightview is the entity that maintains the golf course at Lake Isle. We have had a very good relationship with them over the years. They've done an excellent job. People may remember that we privatized golf course management. We saved 800000 in the first year alone. We've been very successful with Brightview. They've done a good job. And what we've done is we've relied upon them, based upon our contract, to do additional work at the location of the Lake Isle Golf location. So what this would involve would be drainage, Installation on fairways 4 and 12, which are very soggy. Uh, installation of a new blacktop cart paths along hole 6, 12, and 16 with edging, edge repairs. Also the replacement of a portion of the irrigation turbine pump, which is in the uh, main irrigation pump house. And the amount of this work is $175,764. Funding has already been approved as part of our 2021 capital budget and will be added to the 2021 Brightview contract payment amount. And the scope of work, of course, is attached to our documentation. But this is just in a continuing effort to keep the golf course healthy, keep the golf course looking good. We had probably one of our best years ever, if you could imagine, last year. And this year is no different. We have tons of play happening at Lake Isle. The golf course is, is packed. And you know we made a commitment to improve the course. We had done the bunkers over, we did a lot of other you know, paths, some of the drainage work. We fixed some tees, some greens, and whatnot. So this is just kind of a, another iteration of the improvement of the golf course. And uh, this, is, this is also, this comes at the recommendation 
of the Golf Pro there and the Greens Committee, which is a group of golfers there that you know basically have taken it upon themselves to figure out what exactly the course needs, and they're being very judicious about what they want, and uh, they're asking the town to be, of course, supportive of uh, the improvements at the course, which I think we should be. Anyway, with that being said, I'll make the motion to approve this and ask for a second, please. Second. All right. Please call the roll. <coughs> Councilman Marcoccia. Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson. Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte. Aye. Supervisor Calavita. Aye. Lastly, in miscellaneous business, uh, we have had uh, one uh, meeting in August for as long as I can remember, and it's been a long time. Uh, everyone's vacation schedules are all crazy, but we're going to look to have a single meeting on Tuesday, August 10th at 8 p.m. Someone care to make a motion? So moved. Second. Thank you. Please call the roll. Councilman Marcoccia. Aye. Councilwoman Nicholson? Aye. Councilwoman Marcotte? Aye. Supervisor Calavita? Aye. That'll be on our calendar, of course. Okay, so that brings us over to council member reports. Councilman Marcoccia? Excuse me. Supervisor. Um, just wanted to uh, give you an update on Lake Isle. Pools are in full swing. The current hours are from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. Um, there's various activities that have been brought back and are being welcomed, and they are being welcomed by all. For example, poolside music started a few weeks ago. Water aerobics at the adult pool began yesterday. Uh, also, two teen pool parties are coming up, one on Monday, July 19th, and the other on Monday, August 2nd. Um, for a complete schedule and detailed information of all activities, please refer to the bulletin boards, Lake Isle website, Facebook, and on Instagram. Also, the Senior Nutrition Center is bringing back the early bird swim on weekday morning starting Monday, August 9th. For details, please contact the center at 961-0390. As a reminder, Gigante's restaurant is open for outdoor dining at the beautiful adult pool. Make your reservations at www.giganterestaurant.com and come enjoy a great dinner poolside. Um, I also want to thank the Lake Isle staff and two others one was an off-duty police officer, Joe Racine, and the other retired firefighter, Eddie Reardon, that helped a young girl that was in, this, that was in need of some assistance in the pool. Uh, these two individuals, Joe and Eddie, were on the scene. He was assisted also by our superintendent of Lake Isle, George Papadimitrio. Together they worked to um, assist this girl, and all ended very well, um, fortunately. And I just wanted to say, you know, we had an incident uh, last month at the adult pool when it first opened with an elderly person as well, and that, and that was fine too. Um, but we're just so fortunate to have such excellent public servants that go out of their way to help other, others, whether or not they are on or off duty or, or in retirement. A big thank you to these two individuals, to George and to all the staff, as well as all local police and firefighters for all they do to protect us day in and, 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 and all day and all night. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about the library. Um, we had a library board meeting just a few nights ago, and the library is fully open. It's doing very well. There's a lot of activities uh, that are online, so please check the, the website and their calendar. Um, they're really doing well there. They had a lot of capital improvement projects over the past uh, few years. Uh, one of the most recent ones is a window replacement project, and that has begun, and the windows look, they look beautiful. Uh, they really do. And um, the Friends of the Library are starting up their activities. So things are, things are looking up uh, all the way around, and I just wanted to uh, give that report and wish everyone a, uh, a good summer and a safe summer. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Councilwoman Nicholson. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just have a short announcement on behalf of Park and Rex. Uh, let's hope tomorrow brings a little bit of sun and no rain for, to kick off our uh, summer concerts, uh, which will take place uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. at Lake Isle Golf Range. Uh, the band is Epic Soul, and the concert is sponsored by Supervisor Calvita and the town board. And, um, and not only one, but we get a second uh, opportunity to hear a band on Friday evening um, at the same location starting at 7.30. Uh, the band playing will be Tramps Like Us, and that's sponsored by the uh, restaurant uh, Giganti. 
And uh, you can find the whole schedule online at uh, www.eastchester.org. Um, and that is all I have this evening. Thank you. Councilwoman Marcotte. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, I know the Supervisor alluded to the fact that we'll be voting on the, the franchise agreement or, or the public hearings to start the uh, negotiations once again. Um, I just wanted to say it, it almost feels like it was yesterday, right, that we, we just went through this with Cablevision and Verizon. Fifteen years has gone by, and Verizon certainly has gone through a lot of changes. You know, we, they first came on the scene with their fiber optics. Uh, you know, zero Gs, now it's fifth generation. Cable vision as well has gone through many changes. So we look forward to sitting down with them and negotiating to the extent that we are able to you know, get sort of um, a, a better package for the town um, as they utilize our right of ways as they come to and through and bring their service to our the many residents who enjoy their services. So we look forward to that over the next several months. And then I just wanted to mention Columbus Day weekend. Um, of course, there'll be the, the carnival will be held up at Lake Isle. We'll have more uh, information about that as we move forward. I also wanted residents to mark their calendars for the 11th, which is the Monday of that holiday. The Historical Society is gonna be sponsoring a town yard sale in the library lot. Um, we weren't able to have one last year, uh, but for many years it was in the library lot. It was very, very successful. So we look forward to that. I will be uh, posting the vendor contracts. I'll leave some with the, the clerk and with the supervisor's office. And so I hope residents will participate, and if not, certainly attend on that day. Uh, and that's all I have. That concludes my report, Supervisor. Thank you. I just want to echo what Luigi had mentioned about uh, uh, Joe Racine, Eddie Reardon. Uh, that's the kind of guys you want to have living in your town. A young lady's having a problem in the pool, boom, they jump right on it, help her out, and we really applaud their efforts. Uh, they're good guys, and they love East Chester, and we love having them here. Uh, also, uh, on the issue of Verizon, uh, people have frequently asked about uh, 5G service, what's going on, you know, uh, what's happening. A lot of young people uh, are buying 5G phones and the service is spotty because there's not 5G service around. So Verizon is trying to introduce 5G service in the town of Eastchester. Uh, we're probably, I think, the first municipality that they're seeking to do this in. Uh, so the town attorney is working very hard uh, to get this all worked out, but probably in the near future, uh, we will be coming forward with, uh, you know, an agreement with Verizon to permit this 5G service around the town. Uh, they're not really quite sure how many of these units they're going to need. They're going to try it out based upon the, you know, the, the, the range of each of these little units. They're all pretty small. They're normally about the size, of, I guess, of a, a five-gallon pail uh, up on top of a pole. There's some little bit of structure on the bottom of the pole, but they're not at all uh, like those large, uh, you know, fiber optic things that we've been seeing around. But that'll be coming up shortly. Also, the Chester Heights uh, uh, playground, uh, Kitty Playground is back in swing. We'll probably have some small ceremony there, but we're glad that that's now functional. We're also examining the feasibility of another uh, playground in that area. We have to work with the DOT, check about you know feasibility, about uh, finances, pitch, waterways, easements, all stuff goes into that. But we may be doing something a little further there. Also, to Leewood residents, to all Leewood residents, I urge you to sign up for the Swift Reach 911 system that we have, communication system. And uh, in a very short period of time, uh, my office will be establishing a sign up for email blasts from uh, Suez slash United Water. I call them, still call them Nourish Our Water. But um, uh, Suez Water is going to be commencing construction of the uh, water station on the corner of Leewood and Dale Road. And uh, they received their approvals from the town, they received their federal approvals, they received everything, and they must complete this project by 1231-22 because of issues with the Kensico water supply and other uh, uh, you know, requirements and mandates that uh, you know, uh, the federal government has imposed upon them. So probably uh, the next meeting, we will likely have uh, some kind of uh, easement agreement with them. Uh, so people are further familiar. There's a small piece of property on the corner of Leewood and Dale that the town owns. It's maybe uh, 50 feet by, I don't know, over 30 feet. Uh, and a lot of their infrastructure below grade is all there. So uh, they want to get started with that uh, uh, work site you know, promptly. So we probably will be doing a license agreement with them to let them commence work there 
uh, via building permit, of course, and then they'll roll into the larger job, which is on the actual site of uh, 10 Leewood or 197 Oakland or both lots together. So um, we're working out an easement agreement with them presently to give them the right to enter upon the town property for payment, of course, uh, to, um, you know, to start the process. And it's going to be very involved. But they must be completed by 1231-22. So we're trying to work with them to do that. But the, 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 the bigger point I want to make is that uh, what we've demanded from them, and I thank the planning board for doing this, is like we did similarly with the other project in California Road, we want to have uh, an email blast base that we can send information to, that United Water or Suez Water can send directly to them, or we can send to you when we get it from them. Just about timing. If the tunnel's going to be closed, if it's going to be open, what they're going to do on what days. Uh, you know, some days may be, uh, you know, busier than other days. Uh, so we want to make sure everyone is up on what's happening there. Um, we are presently working with the County of Westchester to ascertain whether or not the uh, tunnel will be closed uh, or whether it will be opened. Um, it, you know, there'll be a short period of time where one of the lanes may be closed, but I think there are, are uh, periodic segments, probably no more than two or three days, but several of them where uh, you know, we may have to reroute traffic. So the traffic engineers are working that all out. We're working furiously with the police department and the county and or, you know, everybody that's involved uh, to get this worked out. But the key is that we want to make sure that residents know what's happening when it's happening. So I urge you to reach out to uh, you know, the uh, town website, go on to Swift Reach 911, sign up, because what we can do is we can just carve out the area of uh, you know, Leewood Civic Association and just blast that area. So you can sign up there, but we will definitely at some point in the future, and I'll mention it again ad nauseum, have a certain sign up on the website that you can just, you know, just put your name in and your email address and we'll load up uh, some emails for you. But that's the important part, is getting notified as to what's going on. And again, uh, the, the outside work probably is not going to take as long as what they're doing in the interior of the building. So hopefully it'll be you know, uh, a lot easier on everybody. Uh, the last time we did this up on California Road, it turned out with everyone's cooperation and notice, it worked out to be uh, pretty well. And it, it looks like a beautiful building as far as I can see, as far as the plans show. So it should be OK. Anyway. Um, I guess that, that concludes my report. There's a half dozen things I could elaborate on, but I've taken up a bunch of time. So that brings us over to the second opportunity to address the board. Yes, Frank. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to address the board. I'm Frank Sweeney, along with Mike Fasiglione. Uh, and Charlie Galnick, who is part of the East Chester Civic Association, represents about 150 years worth of residency in the town of East Chester. So we come at it from a fairly detailed level of understanding what our specific area is all about, but I'd like to just address a few areas in terms of who we are. We're an advocacy group of homeowners, that are basically looking to support and encourage reasonable development in the north end of East Chester. It represents about 116 acres of property, about 375 homes in the north end. It's comprised of about 69% of residential properties, 10% commercial, 6% parkland, and 2% plus or minus vacant land. The area itself has a very challenging position of interwoven environments, both commercial and residential, and some of those properties run back to back. Some of that is covered under the comprehensive plan of the town that clearly outlines the specific responsibilities for both the commercial and the residential residents of the town. This brings me to the point of why I'm here. Sometimes the position needs a little bit of a higher authority. I want to talk about infrastructure as it relates to the number of developments in the North End, some small, some a little bit larger. 
but some of them need resolution. The first will be the infrastructure as it relates to, I don't have to tell anybody, the positioning of Woodruff Avenue and Scarsdale Avenue. We've been at this for 15, 20 years. We have a sewage problem that overflows each and every time. It's, no, it's not new here, but we need to step up and resolve it. I'm not looking for mitigation. I'm looking for resolution. We already know what mitigation does. I saw it Thursday night. I saw it Friday night. It wasn't pretty. I'm bringing it to your attention because it needs resolution. Some of the things that are currently in plan for one of the developments, Ray Place, everybody knows about it, is mitigate. I'm not interested in mitigation any longer. We've had it. Putting up a traffic horse to direct traffic is a disgrace. That sewage is being dragged up and down Green Acres, Scarsdale Avenue, Brook Street, and hoping that it's going to go away. Well, guess what? There's still sewage there tonight. It hasn't gone away. The other is that the infrastructure that most of the things we're talking about require significant variances. Significant variances that are not easy to overcome. And we're trying to shoehorn things into place that may or may not work. But I can guarantee you that the mitigation process for the right place opportunity is not going to fly. Not going to fly. And we've known this for quite some time. This doesn't come as a surprise to anybody here. It doesn't come as a surprise to the developer. This was long overdue in terms of our responsibility to the Summerfield Gardens. That's how long it's been going on. We understood that at some point in time, we were going to be able to get this sewage through an MTA tunnel down through the Yonkers Processing Plant. We now know that's not going to happen. That's done. They've already told us, not going to happen. So now what are we left with? We're left with a developer that now has to step up and maybe take a look at several hundred thousand dollars worth of relining of the pipes. Does he want to do it? I don't know. He may want to. But you need to understand that this is going on time and time again with the proposals that are coming forward, particularly in the north end of East Chester. Along with these other items, I don't have to talk to you about increased traffic. It's all over town. It's not going to stop. But the idea is, is that the lights along Brook Street need to have a current synchronization plan in place. The traffic back up on Brook Street from Scarsdale Avenue all the way up to Maple Avenue on a Friday and Saturday night, you can't get through there. So guess where they're going? We're going to cut through North End East Chester, come on down, and go to Olida or go to Grand Boulevard and come up Scarsdale Avenue and trick us out on the light. That's not a solution. That's not a solution. The other, is, the other area is it needs some help and attention, and we've worked with DWP, we work with the East Chester, we work with TPAC, we work with the cable liaison people. I don't know if you've taken a look at any of the cable wires that are hanging from every pole in town. Who is responsible? This is not 10 feet of wire. I can show you three cable boxes that are a couple hundred feet long. Is anybody listening? Yeah, you, you need to just tell us where they are, and we'll reach out to the cable company or to Verizon or to Con Ed or whomever it might be and get a resolution. I'll tell you what. I wouldn't let any of these people anywhere near my computer application. They are not CWA certified people. There is no way in hell if you go down and take a look at any one of those commercial areas on Brook Street, Summerfield, they have strung wire by just looping it through a pole. Is anybody paying attention? Anybody looking up? 
we, we, we have no control over that. That's a utility company. If that's the way they do business, that's regrettable, because I know that, like, uh, my, my personal home, the uh, cable vision is terrible, goes out all the time. Uh, nothing against cable vision, of course, but the service stinks, and the poles are a mess. But that's not Eastchester, that's cable vision. So we have to keep that in mind. But if you tell us where there are problems, we generally will reach out. They're usually responsive to us to get some work done. Work with Lisa. She's been a godsend, okay? Absolute godsend. But we just can't keep doing this every six months. We need to have some consequences of that when they do this and they do a fairly lousy job. When you leave it hanging, it doesn't turn me on. No, it's dangerous. And the other thing is that when you change cable vision to another carrier, guess what they do? They leave it all there. Yep. They cut it right there yeah, no. and let it hang straight down from the wire. Well, perhaps, I don't know, but perhaps through our negotiation on the franchise agreement, we can invoke some kind of penalty. The problem we have, though, is that this is hyper, um, uh, uh, you know, hyper um, uh, examined by the FCC. And they have, you know, they've taken a lot of the ability of a town to negotiate the terms of the cable agreements out by making them like these universal blanket agreements, which, is, which stinks, because we're not able to do anything that we'd like to do, because it's all cookie cutter. But maybe we can work that in. I'm sure we could probably do something about that. Well, I'm sure if it's coming up for negotiations right now, I'd like to take them down well, on any see. street in the North End. There's another thing, too, that, that's a personal peeve that I think the town attorney and I have spoken about, and that's when Con Ed comes in, or the DOT or somebody, and they spray brand new sidewalks and brand new streets with paint for, you know, when they're about to dig, they're supposed to mark everything up, but then it stays there forever. I mean, they're not using a water-soluble paint, uh, so we were thinking about pr putting some kind of ordinance together where within 10 days after completion of the job, they've got to come and remove the spray all over the sidewalks, the poles, and the streets, because it looks terrible. Well, I agree with you. I hope I'm not being too long. It's all right. Because there's, a lot, a, of, of there's, there's a lot of things on my plate. Now, coming back from COVID, we've had 18 and 19 months with nothing going on. And I can agree to that. That's OK. Sure. We're now back. We need to now start to do something about it. We have one other problem, one other concern. Maybe need some of your help some wisdom. Everybody knows that we talked about ball fields and parks in the North End, used extensively by everybody in town. We're not against it. We love to have the kids there. We love to have the pony coat field there. But guess what? We don't have any parking. We have tons of parking on Montgomery, Summerfield. It is metered. But we need to work out a deal so we can provide the parents and the players of the baseball teams a spot in which they can park. We already know that they're not parking up and over the curb on Ewart, Woodruff Avenue. They want to park anywhere they can just jump out of the car and get into the field. We understand that. Well, we're not understanding why they don't understand the law of the town. And it needs to be implemented and not being driven by the, the homeowner has to call. There should be some resolution. Well, you know, every year, as you know, we always go through this ritual yep. where the leagues start up again. And I mean, with all due respect, it's generally, I love them to death, EYSA, because they have all the soccer teams playing down there and their parents are blocking parts of driveways or they're blocking, uh, you know, like a hydrant or a sidewalk, and we have our parking enforcement officers driving around. And people aren't happy, but they should get a ticket. If you park in front of somebody's house and you're not letting them get out of their own driveway, you deserve a ticket. So, you know, normally what happens is we will go out there, we'll, we'll ticket on a couple of Saturdays and Sundays, and everyone kind of gets the word, but we also reach out to the soccer league and say, listen, could you please email blast your population and say, be mindful. And it's not just uh, around Dunwoody Field. It's also at Leewood Field. It's also at Ann Hutch. It's all, so wherever the kids are, you know, uh, when you have three teams playing at once and you have three teams 
uh, or, or six teams, I should say, three games at once, plus kids just played and kids queuing up to play, you have like a broken ant farm, you know, all over the area there. So, you know, we can certainly reach out to the soccer league and to the, uh, I'm going to call it the Pony Colt League, East Chester Baseball League, to do that as well, to make their people mindful of the fact that you can't park all over the place and you take advantage of the triangular lot over by, uh, you know, the old Lohack building, I think it's Seminara building now, park over uh, down by the hair salon and the engineer's offices, park down there and walk, walk, walk five, six hundred feet. That's all you have to do. We know that they're working hard. DWP, the police department, everybody is trying to get their hands around it. But the idea is that when we start back up with all the activities again, we fall right back into the same old, same old. So we're asking the town board, I've, I've identified a number of actions that need to be demonstrated, but we're trying to make the Northeast Chester Civic Association a viable entity of the homeowners that are there now. For example, on Lakeview Avenue, we've only had four new homes built, way in excess of a million and a half dollars. We're not talking about bungalows any longer. We're talking about real legitimate homes, paying big money and big taxes. And when they come to me and say, what's happening in the North End? I really can't say nothing. It's not, not the truth. Well, you have a couple of issues here. We'll have to work on them. Um, with regard to the first issue on the uh, sanitary sewer line, I, I'll speak with Margaret Yuley. Uh, I know she and Joe Tremelli are much more up on yeah. the facts and circumstances, and we'll certainly get back to you shortly. Okay. As far as I know, uh, the highway superintendent discovered some additional lines that were not used uh, that could possibly diffuse some of this, and also uh, there were, uh, kept, uh, what do you call it, uh, clean outs yes. that hadn't been cleaned out in forever because no one even knew where they were. So hopefully that will solve a bit of the problem, but I think we have, I, I, I can't speak uh, about it. I just don't know enough about it, but I'll get back to you about no. it. Everybody has been pitching in. There's no question about it. We're trying to get it resolved. We want to solve the problem, right. But the, exactly. but the idea is, is that we talk about mitigation, and I'm not interested in mitigating this problem. It either needs to be repaired, pipes need to be relined, we're not going to get the MTA to buy into it, so we need to get it to somehow to get it to the Yonkers processing plant. Yeah, it's a shame, too, that the MTA uh, has not been cooperative. No. You know, it's like uh, they have this, what, eight foot wide culvert yep. with maybe two feet worth of, uh, you know, piping there from previous uh, uh, generations of uh, sanitary sewer. And now they're saying, no, we're not doing it. And, uh, you know, but they'll let us, if you wanted to, extrude a pipe under the tracks, which makes no sense. But I will speak with Margaret. I'll get more intelligence on this and I'll give you a call and we'll, you know, see where we are. We're behind you 100 percent, okay? We're just trying to do the best, sure. the combined communities of what's happening in the North End. Sometimes we're so far north, people don't realize where we are. Yeah. You know, a lot of people like to reuse the word, I live in Scarsdale. Yeah. Bite your I don't tongue. live in Scarsdale. <laughs> I live in East Chester. Right, here, here. Okay? Mike Fasigalino is gonna be uh, backing me up here just on a couple of items, but I appreciate your attention and the opportunity to address the board this evening. Sure. And we're looking forward, if there's things that you need from us as a community, i.e. a development of where these wires are, I'll send you my entire phone because I have them all logged in already. That works. That works for us. Okay. So let's get together. Let's do a little bit of work. And let's make I Good to see you again. North End a little bit better place to live. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Frank. Mike, you want to address us? Are you good? You can come up if you like, sure. Good evening. My name is Michael Fasiglione, 43 Woodruff Avenue. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Uh, I'm going to be very brief. I'm basically, uh, I'm a member of uh, Northeast Chester Civic Association. Uh, I'm a resident of the North End for 57 years. East Chester resident, East Chester graduate, and, and I'm uh, very proud of the portion of town that we live in. 
and uh, by the efforts of the Northeast Chester Civic Association, namely Mr. Sweeney, uh, we have kept a, uh, a watchful eye on the overdevelopment of the area. We've had a number of successes over the years, uh, one of them uh, being on Woodruff Avenue across from the uh, Pony League field. Uh, there was an overdevelopment there. The second one being the more recent Summerfield uh, pr project, which uh, went away. And we're presently uh, opposing very strongly the, the Ray Place project for the same reasons. Uh, we, uh, just quickly mentioning the sewerage system, we've got a sewerage system there that is probably over 110 years old, maybe more. <laughs> And uh, the feeling I have is, although they did uncover uh, some areas and clear them, at the last rainstorm, we still had a very similar situation. There, uh, what is happening is that the, uh, I believe the sewerage system is being compromised into the storm system. And we're getting sewerage bubbling up on, on Scarsdale Avenue. And again, as, as uh, Mr. Sweeney said, it gets dragged along up and down the road. And it's, and it's, it's just not an acceptable situation. Uh, I, quickly, I just want to say that I, I fully agree with all of the points Mr. Sweeney uh, made. And I want you to know that we, uh, as a Northeast Chester Civic Association, are with you. We're behind you. We will work with you and do whatever has to be done to come up with a, uh, a viable solution to the, the problems that he discussed. Th again, thank you so much for your time. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Okay, there being no one else, someone care to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. All, right, all in favor? All right. Thank you all. <laughs>